thank you for coming in today. I'm going to be your helper in helping you figure out how to use your new clarinet that you recently purchased. And we'll get through this in styling fashion and you'll be playing like a pro in no time. So I see this is the clarinet you bought from us. Yeah, you picked a really wonderful case. I like this case because it has the individual inserts for the pieces. Bell, mouthpiece, barrel, top stack, bottom stack. I think this is a very nice case. It has very hard styrofoam. It'll help keep the clarinet safe should it get bounced around or anything. Would you like me to show you how to assemble this so that you can do it in music class? Sure. I'll go ahead and do that, and then I will show you all the extra things that you got with your clarinet and how to use them properly to keep this instrument in top shape. So I want to start by introducing you to all the pieces to it. We have your bell. Now this bell, it's very nice. It's a plastic wood composite, so it'll resonate the sound very well. Okay, then we have your bottom stack. And this is where your right hand is going to go. You have a thumb rest back here that you will rest your right thumb under. And I usually try to cradle it on the knuckle of my thumb. So, knuckle. And then you come around to the front. And you place one, two, three fingers on the keyholes. Your pinky finger will navigate these four keys alternatively, depending on the note you're trying to play. But as you can see, they all do different things. This one functions the key right there. This one also functions that key. This one. And this one. Okay, so this is your bottom step. your top stack. So this is where your left hand will go. You have your octave key and your F key in the back, and this is where your left thumb will go. We'll cover this hole and operate the octave key to open should you wish to go up the octave. Now, as for finger placement, your index finger, middle finger, and ring finger will go on these three keys. Your ring finger will alternate this small key right here. We'll take care of that. So your pinky finger will play this one if need be. Your pinky finger will navigate this button, which opens up. Can you see that key? Good. It will open up this back keyhole. Now, when your clarinet is completely assembled, your pinky will also navigate three other keys, and I will show you that later. Your right hand, since it will be sitting on the lower stack, this index finger will also roll up and down these keys, depending on which one you need to push. There are four keys. One, two, three, and four. So this index finger will accommodate that keyhole, like I showed you, and we'll also roll up and down on these, depending on which key you need to press. So that's your top stack. Then we have your barrel. This just is another piece of the clarinet. The barrel can be adjusted to be a little um, higher off the top stack, or completely closed off, to help with any flat or sharp pitches that might be coming out of your instrument when you play it. This is your mouthpiece. It's made of very hard plastic, although it will break, and they are rather expensive, so be very careful with them. There are a variety of mouthpieces available. This one is just one that the manufacturer sends out with the clarinet, but you can buy a multiple variety of different ones. I personally prefer a Van Dorn B45. There. 
very nice mouthpiece. So this gap back here, <coughs> you will have a reed that covers this, and you'll play through it. You'll also have a ligature that holds it on, which I will show you in a minute. So now I'm going to move on to assembly of your instrument. I'll show you how to put it together. As you can see, we have this cork, and it's around this, the bottom of your bottom stack, both ends of the top stack, if you can see. It's also around your mouthpiece. So what I'm going to do is show you how to assemble this. So we have your bell, and this attaches to the bottom end of your bottom stack. So think B, 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 bell, bottom, bottom stack. It assembles like that. Then we have your top stack, which slides in just like that. Okay. Your barrel, the wider end goes on the top of the top stack. And we have your mouthpiece, which slides in to the smaller end of the barrel. Now, you want to line it up so that the opening of your mouthpiece, right here, is in line with the octave key and the F key. So when totally assembled, your instrument should look something like this. Okay. Your bottom hand will go here, your top hand will go here. Now, in order to play your instrument, you're going to need a few things called reeds. And I have a selection for you to choose from. Put this down my lap. So these are reeds. You'll need them to play your clarinet. You don't necessarily have to have all these different kinds, but you'll find a preference for one. So the first one I'm going to show you is a Van Doren reed, and they are made in Paris, France. They're a very nice reed. This is what it looks like. It's been shaved down. It's very thin, as you can see. Very, very thin starts wide at the bottom and gets thinner as you run up the reed to the point where it's almost paper thin at the top. Can you see? On the back it has the name. Now reeds come in different sizes, usually starting at a 2 and working all the way up to a 4 or a 5, depending on the reed manufacturer. This one personally is good for beginners. It's a Van Doren two and a half, and the number simply refers to the hardness and the thickness of the reed. So what you would do is you need to get the reed wet. So what you need to do is take the bottom end of this reed, place it in your mouth, and soak it with your saliva. This will help lubricate the reed, and you want to start with the bottom first because the moisture from your mouth will spread from the bottom of the reed all the way up to the top. Just right there. Okay. So after you do that, and if it's a new reed, give it a few minutes in your mouth. Set that down for a minute. You have this ligature, which we use to hold the reed into place. There are different types of ligatures all around. Um, they have metal ones. I prefer this leather one. It's just a much better quality. So you take this ligature, this one, and they all assemble differently on the mouthpiece. Again, I like this one because it's leather, and this leather band goes across the entire back of the reed, and since there's only one screw, it keeps even pressure over the reed. Some ligatures have two screws, and unfortunately, what that does is causes pressure in two points instead of one continuous point, which can affect the way that the reed vibrates. So 
So we're going to go ahead and just slide this on like this. You can see the screw in the front across the name of the mouthpiece and just this leather band in the back. Now, let's say you've soaked your reed in your mouth for a few minutes. The thin end goes up here on top of the mouthpiece where the opening is. Because when you put the mouthpiece in your mouth and you blow air through it, the air that you blow out will go through the small space between the reed and the mouthpiece, causing the reed to vibrate back and forth, which will produce the resonating sound. So we're just going to slide the reed in. Be very careful not to break it, it's fragile. And when you put the reed on, you want to tighten this up. I'm going to take the barrel off so that I can just show you this mouthpiece first. Okay. So when you're doing this, you want to leave about this much space between. You don't want this ligature to sit across the bottom of the reed. Okay? Yeah, no, that's okay if you have, but from now on I would start leaving about that much space in between the bottom of the reed and the bottom of the ligature. Because if you put it too low, it affects the way the reed vibrates. Now, when you turn the this around. See how you can see that ridge of the wood on the other side of the black? You don't really want to see that. So I'm going to loosen this screw again. And I'm going to slide the reed down just a little bit. Tighten it back up. Now, when I say tighten, you do not want to crank this so hard that the reed can't vibrate. And you'll find that sweet spot once you've played for a couple of weeks, you'll find that sweet spot of where your ligature likes to be. So I usually tighten it and then I go back half a turn. See the very small amount of wood that you can see over that black ridge of the mouthpiece? That's what you want. So now your reed is assembled. Put this back on. So when you hold your clarinet, you need to hold it between your legs at a 45 degree angle out from your body. So it should kind of look at an angle like this. Uh-huh, yes, your music teacher will cover more of that with you when you start. Um, every music teacher is a little different, so I don't want to say to do one thing or another, but it needs to be at a 40... The bell should be angled at a 45 degree angle away from your body. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Cleaning and maintenance. Perfect. I'll talk about that right now. So, when you're done playing your instrument for the day, you're going to start by taking off the mouthpiece first. Removal of the ligature, removal of the reed. Now, for reeds, it's very important they go back and they dry flat because unfortunately they are made of bamboo not unfortunately but bamboo reeds are very nice when a reed dries because it's wood it can dry and warp kind of not flat like if you've ever seen an old patio after years and years of rain the wood is kind of bent and warped the same thing can happen to your reeds. So we recommend a reed protector case. And they come with two-sided, or they come with, you know, two-sided with two slots on each side, so you could store four. This is just a small one. It stores two. So what I would do, you open it up a little bit. So you can see it opens a little bit. The most important part to keep flat is this thin area at the top, because if this gets wavy and warped, your reed will not play properly. So when you take these to store them, you need to sort of wipe off the excess saliva, if there is any, 
And you take this thin part and you put it on the bottom like this. You gently slide it in, just so that the bottom of the reed is level with the bottom of the reed protector. And then you just snap the top part closed. Whoops, I didn't close it. Okay, now it's in. This will keep the reed flat against the plastic and will help keep the reed from warping. I recommend using one of these with all of your reeds because reeds are very expensive and they will last much longer if you keep them in a reed protector. Okay. These clear packages that they originally come in, those are fine. Um, you can use those if you want to, but I really recommend getting a reed protector case because these cases are plastic so they don't keep the reed tight and flat against the surface. Now, you asked about care and maintenance of the instrument itself. So when you're done playing, it's very important that you clean out your mouthpiece and that you clean out your barrel. If you see inside the barrel, it starts out wide and then gets smaller. That's because there's a ring in the inside. So it has this little edge that will collect spit and anything else that was in your mouth, like food or anything like that, food particles. It'll all collect around that edge. So I recommend taking a small Q-tip and just running it along the inside on both ends of the barrel. So, I don't know if you can... Oh yeah, there you go. You can see now. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you're just going to take a Q-tip like this and swirl it around the inside along that edge to clean out any food particles. Does that make sense? Great. Now, for your bell, your bell also has the same type of ridge. Although it's not as susceptible to all the food particles like the barrel is because of how much farther down the instrument it is. But you should still take a Q-tip and clean that edge as well, just to keep it clean. Now, as far as cleaning the inside of the longer tubes, I recommend a, a saliva cleaner. They come, they look like this. They have a piece of cloth. This is kind of a fancy one. They have a piece of cloth on the end. It's just a little cloth tied to a string. In this case, mine's a piece of silk. It's kind of expensive. And they have a little weight at the end. And all you're going to do is drop the weight through the instrument so that it comes out the end. And you're going to gently and slowly pull that cloth through the instrument, just like that. It will absorb any moisture that was in the instrument, as well as cleaning out any little particles. So you'll run that through the bottom stack, and you'll also run that through your top stack. You can run it through your mouthpiece and your barrel as well, but you don't have to. But you should keep the mouthpiece clean, because on the side of the mouthpiece, it's hollow, and so that will also collect food particles. But you can also use a Q-tip to clean that there as well. Well, if you have any questions, you can always refer to our customer service line. I want to thank you for coming in. really appreciate you taking the time to learn this instrument and become friends with it. Uh-huh. I, I also play this instrument. <laughs> yes. I love it. I've played it for a very long time. It's very rewarding. It can be a little difficult to learn at first, but the outcome is wonderful. It produces a beautiful tune. You can play very beautiful music on it. So again, thank you for coming in. I hope you enjoy your instrument, and we'll see you back in the music studio very soon. Thank you. <laughs>